In my previous video where I shared my design for my next big and awesome aquaponic setup, I kept kind of vacillating between whether or not I was actually going to put fish in my aquaponic system. Which, you know, the fishless aquaponics sounds like quite the misnomer, and it really is. And, uh, but I want to talk about why that doesn't, having fish doesn't necessarily make sense for my situation, why it may not make sense for your situation, depending on what and how you're growing. And uh, really just talk about the, the, the shortcomings of aquaponics in general, like in terms of nutrient deficiencies and whatnot. So that's all I'll be discussing today on Funky Rooster. All right, so the ideal aquaponics is aquaculture and hydroponics, meaning that you take the growing of fish as a protein, as a meat source, alongside vegetables. The reality of aquaponics, though, is that the, the, how that really works out, if you're just talking about growing something purely from fish waste and not adding anything else to the system, then you're really talking about growing fish and then growing leafy greens because you can't grow any fruiting or any significant plants with just fish waste. It's just not gonna happen. Every experienced aquaponics person will tell you about how they supplement. And I've had a lot of success using fish, specifically koi fish, um, in a, some kind of pond, whether it be a kiddie pool or whatever, uh, col and col goldfish too, not just koi fish, but using their waste to grow all sorts of stuff. I grew tons and tons of peppers. That was my big thing. And uh, it worked successfully, but only because I heavily heavily, heavily <laughs> supplemented. Um, because you're gonna, with, with normal, if you're just using fish waste, then you're gonna run into deficiencies in potassium, magnesium, possibly magnesium, uh, calcium, and iron. Iron is a huge one. There's just not enough iron in, you know, the, the fish waste, what is coming back out of the fish when you give them the food. And the food, you know, that, that, that fish food isn't high in those elements anyway. So you end up having to supplement. And this is why it's silly. So really most aquaponics really is just hydroponics with a fish bonus, a fish nitrogen load, because uh, you do have supplement to grow anything beyond leafy greens. Now, if you're only go wanting to grow that tilapia alongside some lettuce, then you're, all, you're probably going to be all set. You, it's likely, unlikely you'll need anything else. But to, to try, I want to have a more f fulfilling solution. You know, so I as I did in the past, I'm going to have to supplement a lot. So what do I supplement? So to get calcium, I put in oyster shell. I actually have a bunch of oyster shell that I had, you know, crushed oyster, sh oyster shell from when I had chickens. So I have that that I'm thinking about putting in. Chelated iron is a big one. I have to buy like a little canister of chelated iron. Now it go a little goes a long way. You just need a little tiny pinch in your system for a relatively small system. I have one just jar of chelated iron that I've been using for a decade. You know, so you don't need a lot. Um, with magnesium, a little bit of Epsom salts, um, and there's different things you can use for, for potassium that I'll, perhaps I'll talk about in another video if I focus on those supplements. But I don't want to get too deep into all of it. So, uh, because of the problem with the potassium, usually the things you supplement affects pH. So I don't want to get into the details, we'll save it for another video. But the, the point is to really grow like peppers and fruiting vegetables, serious vegetables beyond leafy greens in aquaponics, I always had to add all this extra stuff. Whoa, hurricane. I'm hoping you'll be able to hear me. We, it's a bit of wind today. Uh, not as quite as windy as my last property, but still quite a bit of wind. So you end up needing to supplement the system anyway. All right, so you're, you're at a point where you're, you're kind of doing hydroponics anyway. You might be doing a natural hydroponics where you're trying to find like these natural things instead of like, you know, I don't know, whatever commercially processed, you know, complete nutrient hydroponic solutions, like pre-made chemical solutions fertilizers, but you're still, I mean, I don't know if it is ultimately more natural, but my point being, you know, it's just not that standard hydroponics, but we shouldn't fool ourselves into thinking that, you know, aquaponics supplemented with all this stuff is, it's not just aquaponics anymore in its purest form. It doesn't have that pure simplicity because we're trying to do massive things with fish poop. So at the end of the day, you're going to have to supplement a lot. Now, if you're going to be supplementing that far, you know, do you need the fish? Now, if you're really serious about growing serious vegetables and wanting a consumable fish like tilapia, you know, that might make sense. But I'm not going to do that. You know, one, I don't need a ton of meat to begin with. And two, I don't have the space to grow any sizable consumable fish. So if I were to have something, it would be goldfish 
or minnows, probably goldfish. I mean, I've always wanted to try aquaponics with some other types of varieties of, of fish, but goldfish was always the standard because they're so, they're so cheap. <laughs> if you just buy like cheapo feeder goldfish and they are hardy. They're like the hardiest fish you can get. Carp just survive everything. Temperature extremes, they eat anything. They eat plant matter, they eat animal matter. They just, they're like the pigs. Goldfish are like the pigs of the aquatic world. So they're, they're probably the best move. But then again, I'm not gonna eat them, you know? Um, so why should I even have them? You know, for my particular uses, it's like, why? Just to add a little extra nitrogen? Honestly, you can add that extra nitrogen by taking the fish food and throwing it directly into the water and letting it decompose and let all those nitrifying bacteria break down those things. And then you skip the fish, like the, the, the stage of the fish and don't lose any materials or, or whatever in the meanwhile uh, in that extra step. Now, I'm not necessarily going to do that, but I, you know, what do I use as a nitrogen source? Well, I could be using worm castings. I could, be, I could create a vermicomposting setup, a, a worm bin, and, and harvest those, those uh, worm castings and use that as part of a tea. Um, compost itself is part of a tea. You know, whatever crazy um, sources of nitrogen you might be into adding, and I won't go into detail there, especially particularly weird ones, save that for other videos. But my point being that you could really add a lot more, take that unnecessary extra element out of there, because here's the other thing too, when you add a, an animal element to anything, it just complicates things unnecessarily in my experience. That's why I've always been not keen on keeping animals, and the, in the process of trying the homesteading stuff, I've pared down and reduced the size of the animals, the amount of the animals, because that's that's so many extra, it's one more thing you have to think about, one more thing you have to take care of. And I kind of want to create a system that is mostly just, I want it to be a churning living thing, but more in a microbial sense, not a complex life form sense. So my thoughts right now are to not have fish at all, to have a totally fishless aquaponics. So this, I'll be adding all those supplements. I would probably be throwing in azomite rock dust for trace minerals. Uh, I may be throwing in, you know, whatever's the nitrogen source. I, right now I'm thinking about a compost slash vermicompost tea, a worm tea. And we'll see what happens. You know, I see a lot of people trying to run hydroponics on compost tea, and they usually fail because they don't supplement further. Because compost tea itself is not going to give you everything you need. You need all those other elements. So at the end of the day, it's not really aquaponics at all, especially if I'm not using fish. That is such a mis misnomer, and I apologize ahead of time. but. Fishless aquaponics has just become what it's called. And you'll see some terms like vermiponics or bioponics, and those are cool. Um, sometimes also organic or natural hydroponics. I may use all that stuff interchangeably, depending on what specifically I'm using my system. But in general, at this point, I don't think I'll be using fish. And you know, my, my opinion may change, because it is fun to keep fish. And if I actually had like a nice little pond set up, I think I'd be more inclined. But um, I don't know. I may just start out eliminating that step. I can't say that I've ever specifically done a fishless aquaponics before. All my successful systems were aquaponics technically because I was growing goldfish, but it was uh, with all these other supplements too. So that's my thought on the topic. Um, again, true aquaponics, you're basically growing an edible fish and leafy greens, lettuce, because you can't grow anything more with just fish waste. And if you're supplementing on top of those fish, is it really truly aquaponics anymore? Is it really just hydroponics with a bunch of fish swimming around in your, your nutrient solution? So those are kind of my thoughts. Now, I don't know ultimately where it will go. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel so that you can keep up with this journey because I'm curious to see how it'll develop. Already, I'm starting to rethink my design from the other day. Um, so I'm just gonna build a bunch of stuff, see what works for outdoors, see what works for nutrients, see what works for the different vegetables I wanna grow. And we'll, we'll zero in together. We will work together to zero in on a perfect design and a perfect system. So in any case, thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll share this video, or at least give me a thumbs up. And I'd love to hear your comments below about your own experiences with your own thoughts about the fishless aquaponics, the natural hydroponics versus aquaponics, all those things. Love to hear your thoughts. And what the heck terminology should I use for this system that I'm thinking about creating? Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for watching and thank you for joining me on this journey.